several years after building a Raptor-like machine, I have decided to upgrade to Arrow Lake. Here's why. Better gaming performance versus my prior machine. According to reviews, the Core Ultra 7 265K beats the 13600K in gaming. Not by a huge margin, but it's a win, on average nonetheless. And after several BIOS updates and game patches, it's slightly better today in gaming than it was at launch. For me, all I care about is that my machine is better at gaming than my prior machine. I tested some games versus my prior 13600K machine, and there are some huge gains in some cases. Compared to my prior machine, in Setters of the Tomb Raider, I saw a 14% increase at 1080p lowest settings. In these benchmarks, I am comparing my current overclocked Arrow Lake machine to my prior overclocked Raptor Lake machine. In Guardians of the Galaxy, at 1080p low, I saw a 20% increase versus my prior machine. Two very solid increases. Of course, it is not all wins though, as in Severed Steel with RT enabled. I found an area where performance took a hit. 77 FPS on an overclocked 13600K drops to 71 FPS on the 265K. But this was before the BIOS updates. It might have changed since then, but I sold my GPU so I am not able to test this again. Even if it isn't the fastest gaming CPU, there are new GPU technologies such as multi-frame generation that are now being added into more and more games. If one uses frame generation, or if you're gaming at high resolutions and are not using a GPU that costs $1,000 or more, there is a chance that having the fastest gaming CPU won't make much of a difference. Much better single and multi-threading performance versus my prior machine. The video editing software I use to render these videos is DaVinci Resolve. On my Raptor Lake setup, it took 1 minute and 47 seconds to complete the render of a recent video. Rendering the same video on my Arrow Lake setup took only 1 minute 14 seconds, a reduction of 33 seconds. Or looking at it another way, the Raptor Lake setup took around 45% more time to complete the render. In Cinebench 2024, my overclocked 13600K scored 1427 points in the multi-thread test. In the same test, my overclocked Core Ultra 7 265K scored 2151 points, a massive 51% improvement. Despite being a budget air cooler, I was still able to exceed the tech power-up result. This is because my machine is undervolted and overclocked. I kinda wish I still had an all-in-one liquid cooler to see how far I could push this CPU. I bet with the liquid cooler, I could get it to at least 2200 points. As for the single core test, my overclocked 13600K scored 122 points versus 137 points of my Core Ultra 7 265K, a solid 12% increase. Going from DDR4 to DDR5, in my last machine, I was using 32GB of DDR4, which was clocked at 4000 mega transfers per second. The DDR4 I was using was low latency but in some scenarios, I was held back by the lower frequency. Moving to Arrow Lake, I needed to make the move to DDR5. Luckily, the prices for DDR5 are pretty good at the moment, and so I decided to increase memory capacity by 50%, going from 32GB of DDR4 to 48GB of DDR5. My 2x24GB kit of DDR5 uses Hynix MDI, so I will be overclocking the RAM. Its XMP clock speed is 6400 mega transfers per second, but I was able to overclock the memory to DDR5 8200C40 in a short amount of time after copying primary timings from a different RAM kit. I was even able to run this higher speed at XMP voltages. With Arrow Lake, increased memory speeds can make a substantial difference in certain scenarios. Efficiency and easy cooling requirements. I recently changed my CPU cooler to a Hybrid 212 Black Edition air cooler, which is by most accounts, a budget CPU cooler. I made this change since this cooler was enough to cool the 13600K. I am now using this cooler for the Core Ultra 7 265K. For most people, 
I would probably recommend using a higher end cooler for this CPU, but this cooler works for me since I have undervolted the CPU. As seen in my Cinebench 2024 multi-threading result, even with this budget cooler, I am getting a better multi-threaded score than tech power up thanks to my undervolt and overclock. If I was running this at stock, I would probably be experiencing a bit of thermal throttling, but there is no throttling in that multi-thread test with my undervolted settings. Micro Center Intel Bundle Deal One thing that pushed me to upgrade to Arrow Lake is the current deal at Micro Center, which has the CPU priced at 299 20 cores for 299 is an incredible deal in my opinion. In addition to the discount on the CPU, they are also offering a $70 discount on a motherboard if you purchase both the motherboard and CPU at the same time. Compared to launch day, that is a savings of over $170, which is massive. And in my case, the board I was interested in had an open box unit in stock for another $41 off. So I ended up getting the open box motherboard and CPU for 414 plus tax. A 20 core CPU with motherboard for 414 plus tax. To me, that seems like a great deal. New overclocking features. One thing that I like to do when getting a new platform is overclocking. With Arrow Lake, there are more overclocking features than before. You can overclock the P cores, E cores, ring, RAM, die to die interconnect, and the next generation Encore. So far I've done the following on my machine. I left the P core stock, 5.2 GHz all core, and 5.5 GHz 2 core boost. I have increased the E core frequency by 100 MHz, bringing it up to 4.7 GHz. I have also increased the ring by 200 MHz, increasing that to 4 GHz. At the moment, I have the die to die clock at 3.1 GHz, which is a 1 GHz increase from the 2.1 GHz base frequency, and I added 500 MHz to the NGU clock, bringing it to 3.1 GHz as well. And the RAM was taken from DDR5 6400 up to DDR5 8200, a massive 28% overclock in memory frequency. In addition to being able to overclock various parts of the CPU, you also have a lot of options for voltage tuning as well. Since I'm on an air cooler, I am trying to reduce power as much as possible, so I have undervolted the cores by using a negative voltage offset. I am using a minus 60 millivolt offset for the cores, which offers a decent reduction in power consumption versus stock. Improved integrated graphics. I normally use a discrete GPU when using my PC, but at times I sell my GPU in anticipation for the next generation. I currently have no GPU and I'm using the integrated graphics of Arrow Lake and the results are very good for an integrated graphics solution. These are by far the best integrated graphics I have ever used. I have two high refresh rate monitors, one at 240 Hz and the other at 120 Hz and the integrated graphics drives them both at their maximum refresh rate while on the desktop while using my motherboard's HDMI and DisplayPort inputs. The graphics results are pretty good from an integrated GPU as well. My monitors are both 1440p, so I do have to turn resolution down in more demanding games. But you can still get a good gaming experience on the integrated graphics if you keep expectations in check. One way to increase gaming performance is to use lower resolutions or using upscaling technologies like XCSS or FSR. I was pretty impressed being able to play Wanted Dead at around 60 FPS when using FSR on the auto setting. Auto setting in this game allows FSR resolution to drop considerably, so the graphics do become a bit low resolution. But the frame rate is still good, so I found the gameplay to be very enjoyable. The GPU is a bit faster than last generation consoles like PS4 and Xbox One S. Here is Just Cause 3 running at console settings, with no Jaguar Core CPU limitations. 
the gaming experience exceeds that of the last generation consoles in this game with 60 FPS being possible. I will do a separate video going more into depth about gaming on the Arrow Lake integrated graphics, but for now I'll say it offers a much better gaming experience than last generation consoles like PS4 and Xbox One S. It is great to see that integrated graphics have improved quite a bit, but a modern entry level GPU would run circles around this. Still, I would say having a GPU that is a bit faster than Xbox One S and PS4 is pretty good. BIOS issues. The only BIOS issue I ran into was fixed in the current BIOS. In the prior BIOS, my machine would show GPU artifacts when using the integrated graphics with memory speeds over around 7,000 mega transfers per second. The only reason I noticed this was since I sold my GPU, I was forced to use the integrated graphics for a while. This issue is completely fixed on the latest BIOS, as I am currently running DDR5 8200 mega transfers per second memory and using the integrated graphics with no artifacts. My experience with Arrow Lake has been very positive so far. Since I recently picked up Arrow Lake, I am using an updated BIOS, and the only issue I encountered was fixed with the most recent 0x114 BIOS. Overclocking went very smoothly for me as well, while reducing core voltages. It is nice to get additional performance over stock while using less power, and I was amazed at how easy it was to overclock my Hynix MDI DDR5 kit. I literally just copied the primary timings from a higher clocked RAM kit, and it just worked. I've never had such an easy time memory overclocking. Arrow Lake has been the most enjoyable platform for me to overclock. Overall, the gaming performance seems to have improved over my prior machine, but as someone who tends to stick to mid-range GPUs, I doubt I would notice a difference at the resolutions and settings I use, no matter what modern CPU I was using. I do plan on upgrading my GPU maybe this month, maybe next month, depending on how things shake out. I also sometimes make use of frame generation technologies. So while gaming performance is important, it is not a top priority for me at this time. In the end, this Arrow Lake build is a solid upgrade over my prior machine. Gaming performance on average has improved over my last machine, and it seems that performance has improved with new BIOS updates. Multi-thread performance is sometimes up to 50% faster and my DaVinci Resolve renders are around 45% faster. Going from DDR4 to DDR5 allowed me to go from 4000 mega transfers per second to 8200 mega transfers per second. The new overclocking features were easy to use, allowing me to increase various clocks and the memory controller allowed for easy overclocking of my Hynix MDI DDR5 kit. The new integrated graphics offer a gaming experience that is better than last generation consoles like PS4 and Xbox One S, and runs older and less demanding games very well. The Arrow Lake experience has improved a bit from launch. Hopefully Arrow Lake will become even more refined in the future.